Grace, mercy, and peace be with you all from God our Creator and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Pastor Tim was actually scheduled to preach this weekend, but when we returned from our mission trip in Haiti, I could not stop talking about it. So Tim asked if I would like to preach this weekend and tell some Haiti stories, and I am so happy to tell you about our mission trip. Justin De Leiden and Clay Thomas from our youth ministry staff and I spent a week in Haiti. Justin and Clay are here in the back. Would you guys stand up and wave to everybody? There's Justin and Clay. Thanks, guys. Merely Abraham and Paul and Mathurin, who brought us this the dream for this ministry were there longer. They planned to be with us this morning, but their flight back was canceled from Haiti, so they're still there trying to get back. Along with our team on the ground, we distributed the shoes, food, toiletries, and soccer balls that you so generously donated. And it was amazing. Yes, it was unspeakably hot. But we had air conditioning at night and could sleep well. And yes, the roads and the traffic are nightmare material. But Poland drove us everywhere and kept us safe. And yes, we needed to be careful about food and water, but everybody stayed healthy. And yes, the poverty there is staggering. But that's why we're there. And oh my goodness, the children. We put good black dressy shoes on the feet of 426 children. Those shoes are part of their required school uniform and they're very hard for them to get there. In the process of giving out all of those good things, I think they are learning to trust that we do what we say we're going to do. Our team on the ground. Six distributors who watch over each area where the children live are truly outstanding people. Fabo, Enoch, Roniel, Jula, Denise, and Fada are Haitians alongside Mirli and Polin who share the dream for a brighter future for the children. They are dedicated to this ministry and they are faithful members of the body of Christ. I think if Jesus asked them, who do you say that I am, they would say, you are my hope and you are my strength. We had more time to get to know them this year and we just loved what we learned about them. First this morning, I would love to describe to you how this ministry works so that you can get a feeling for the scope of it. Early in the year, we ship several pallets of Feed My Starving Children food to Cap Haitian. Then, to get just as close to the proper shoe size as we possibly can, we ask the distributors to measure the feet of all of those children, which is a huge effort. As we are receiving the information, you all begin the shoe hunt. If there is a pair of black dress shoes left in the West Metro area after you are done, or even online, I would be very surprised. And then in several sessions in Fellowship Hall, a pair of shoes is carefully matched up with each child and put in a bag with that child's name on it. And they love getting shoes that they know have been chosen just for them. You also then are donating toiletries and soccer balls. And we organize everything within an inch of its life. That's our Cindy Carlson's doing, of course. Pack and ship them to Miami and from Miami um, by ship to Cap Haitian. In Cap Haitian, the secretary of the organization, that's Fabo, and a team of delightful and hardworking teenagers whom he also coaches in soccer, pack up the pallets of food and the 40 large boxes of everything else from customs. They go to customs and get everything and then they deliver it to Fabo's house where it's kept safe until we arrive. Then Poland arrives and that team puts 10 Feed My Starving Children mana packs into each bag. That's 60 meals per child. That same week 
and this is new this year, Poland and the distributors visited every child again and took a photo and attached it to those cards. So now we have name, age, shoe size, and photo of every child. Another huge task well done by the team there. Clay, Justin, Mirli, and I arrived with a breathtakingly thorough list of every child in every location. We had some team bonding time and then we went to work in a cycle of packing the bags with toiletries for each child and doing the distributions. The distributions began with the children and their adults gathering at a secure, walled location. We started with a warm greeting, said a word about the ministry, and about all of us, all of you, sending love and respect along with the food and the shoes. And we had a prayer. The team are very good prayers. Then Poland, or the site's distributor, would take a pair of shoes out of the box, call out the name that he read on the shoes, the child would come forward and present the photo card, we measured the feet again, carefully recorded the size, put the shoes in their bag, and finally handed the bag to the child. And the bags were heavy. Some little ones couldn't lift their bags, and they had to drag them. But if anyone tried to help, they said no. They were very happy to have their bags, and they were not going to let them out of their sight. With their permission, we have lots of photos to share the joy with you. And I invite you to check them out in Fellowship Hall. We did this process for six different groups in five different locations for over 400 children. And it went very well. We learn something and we get a little better at it every year. The question that I have been asked most this week is, did the shoes fit? And mostly they did. But when they didn't, some people traded with each other and others came back to shop from the extra shoes that you all so generously donated. And somehow it works. They are resourceful people and they make it work. Something so fun was that whenever we saw young people playing soccer, whether it was an organized team or just a group of kids, we stopped and gave them a gorgeous new soccer ball. Sometimes what they were using was worn out, and sometimes it had never ever been an actual soccer ball. It was just some stuff with some other stuff wrapped around it that they were kicking around. At one new location this year, a boy's name was called to come up for his shoes, and the leaders there mentioned that he had just won a soccer competition. Well. Our Cindy had packed three soccer balls in their box of shoes, which we had kept hidden. So we gave this boy his very own soccer ball. Oh my goodness. It was like we had given him a puppy and a pony and a bag of gold all at the same time. The purest wonder and delight was on his face. It was a beautiful thing. And then we presented the other two to the leaders so that they could play with all the children. This particular ministry was started by a group of Haitian college students who had a heart for the children, and they wanted to help. So they came together, they formed this organization, and they were awesome and organized and enthused, and we were happy to partner with them, bringing them shoes and food. Another moment of utter delight was when we gave those seven teenagers that we hired to, to do the, the heavy lifting, well, we gave them a gift of special baseball caps. Now, you need to know that it is really, really dark there at night with no electricity outside, some in the houses, but certainly nothing on the roads or the streets. And these caps had lights in the brim. They were a total hit. The guys were jumping up and down, cheering and chanting my name. It was just about the most fun I've ever had. 
Well, I hope that all of this gives you an idea of what you have made possible. There is so much more to tell, and we will have more opportunity to talk about the ministry in the fall. But if I had just word to tell, one word to tell you from Haiti, from our leaders, from the kids, from their families, it would be appreciation. The children, their families, and the Haitian team appreciate you so much. Many students or parents surprised us by writing notes on the back of the photocards. Merlee and Paul and will translate every one of them for us, but just a few of them were in English. I certainly didn't expect that. So I can tell you for sure that we received five God bless yous, and we received seven I love yous, one of them with a little heart by it. One person wrote, Only God can reward you for your gift. Thank you so much. And this is my favorite. It said, Hi, everybody. Today, I am delighted to appreciate you. <laughs> and it continued, I am very happy because you enrolled my name in this ministry. Next month, I am going to school in Jesus' name. Thank you for your generous gift. I am praying for you. God bless you. Signed, Fabrice Louis, age seven. Isn't it beautiful that Fabrice is delighted to appreciate us? There is something else I want you to know about their appreciation. After the distributions were complete, we had a leader dinner with the distributors, Mirli, Poland, Justin Clay, and I. And I asked them how they felt the distribution went in their location and if they had any thoughts about improving the process in any way. Instead of answering my question, each one went back with deep gratitude to January when we sent Poland with funds you donated for emergency food and tuition. Do you remember last fall? Hurricane Matthew caused flooding which destroyed crops in Capation, which meant that food prices went up. And our kids and their families are the poorest of the poor who can just barely pay for food and school tuition when things are normal. So when they had to pay more for food, many of those families could not afford school tuition. So many of you responded to that need by making donations. And the leaders want you to know that your contributions for tuition and food in January were truly life-giving and life-saving. Now, the kids knew that that help was coming. And they knew that they would be able to continue school in the next term because of it. And so that helped them to finish strong. And the team wants you to know how much that means to them. At this dinner, sitting at a table outside in increasing darkness, without electricity, Fabo talked about the dream he and Poland and Mirli had shared those years ago to help the children, and how moved he was that it had come to be. The scripture verse he shared was from Matthew 7, where Jesus says, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened. He saw our ministry together as God answering their dream, their prayer, and opening doors for the children. At some point in the increasing darkness, Justin and Clay took out a cell phone, turned on the light, and then they put an empty plastic bottle on top of the light, which glowed very nicely, creating some lovely, soft light in the darkness for our table, a fitting symbol for this ministry. And later Justin said, if Christ was ever present anywhere, Christ was at that table. God's presence was overwhelming there in the beauty of the team, in what God is accomplishing, in bringing us together. Now, if you ever get a chance to travel with our Clay and Justin, do it. 
They are people of deep faith and flexibility, and they ate goat soup and gizzard, and they liked it. (laughs) They found joy even in the challenging situations we faced, and they connected so beautifully with the kids and the Haitian team. I asked them what they wanted you to know about our ministry in Haiti. Justin observed that this ministry we are doing alongside Haitian people is extremely challenging, but extremely life-giving for the children. It isn't easy at all. Not one part of it is easy, he said. Collecting the shoes, boxing them, shipping them, financing it. So many people of St. Philip the Deacon are involved to make it happen. It challenges us, but it is so extremely life-giving and so important. And Haitian people on the ground care deeply about this ministry. They know what they're doing. They know what makes sense for the children, how best to serve them. And that means the world. Because it is not us in Minnesota saying, you need this but rather listening to their dreams, to their needs, and helping where we can. Clay would like you to know about the impact of that amazing team on the ground. Haiti is a totally foreign country, so different from us, and yet we share with them the same goal, a better future for those children and a desire to invest in that future. Our team members are among the poor. They have very, very little themselves, but they are faithful enough to get this ministry moving. Clay said it's one of the best expressions of faith that he's ever seen. Haiti has so many challenges. This ministry depends on faith. It depends on God providing. And God does provide through us as faithful people who are listening and following. My friends, God provides through us. Children are going to school and having hope for a better future because God has moved us to share a dream. Not one bit of it is easy, but it is good and it is faithful. Who knows what God is up to in the lives of those children on whose feet we put shoes? What good they will accomplish in this world? With God, all things are possible. And so, my friends, on behalf of the children, I say to you all this morning, I am delighted to appreciate you. In Jesus' name, amen.